So today we're talking about the myth and the misconceptions around solar energy, solar installation, uh, your inverters, your batteries, your solar charge controller. So you've heard about this myth and misconceptions over the years and you probably believe that they are true but they're not true. <laughs> if you want to know about these myths and misconceptions you've had over the years, you definitely have to stick around because I'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. My name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green, all right? So you're welcome. So we're talking about the myth and misconceptions around solar energy, solar installations, your batteries, your charge controllers, and your inverter. You've heard this over and over again, and you probably believe them to be true, but they're not true all right so we'll start with number one we would love you to subscribe and also click uh, the bell icon all right uh, so that we can notify you when we have fresh and brand new videos all right thank you very much while you do that the very first myth and misconception we'll be talking about is the fact that they say you shouldn't keep your battery on a concrete floor all right so they're saying that you shouldn't keep this battery so right here is a start battery okay so they're saying whether it's a start battery whether it's a deep cycle battery you're not meant to keep your battery on a concrete floor or on a ceramic tile so typically most homes in nigeria have ceramic tiles on it so they're saying don't put your battery on a ceramic tiles or on a concrete floor so if you put your battery on a concrete floor, the battery is going to drain very fast. Uh, that means the battery is going to deplete, discharge very quickly. So never keep your battery on a concrete floor. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't really blame anyone who believes this because I practically grew up believing this same thing because I've heard it over and over again. And I said to myself, that must be true. All right. So I believed it, but that's not true you can actually keep your battery on the concrete floor and it's not going to drain all right so if you look at the fact that battery has gone through uh so many transformations over the years the very first battery was built on a wooden crate so now we've had that batteries built on polycarbonate we've had batteries built on uh, polypropylene all right so these are very sophisticated plastics this plastics has been built to withstand impact it's been built to withstand shock it's been built to withstand temperature whether it's cold temperature or hot temperature all right so the main reason for telling you that you shouldn't keep your battery on a concrete floor or on a ceramic tile is the fact that the coal that is generated from the floor could discharge the battery quickly and make it drain fast they even go as far as believing that it is going to cause damage to the battery cells but that's not true ironically it's the other way around it's when you have hot temperature it could deplete the batteries very fast sometimes twice as much so very hot temperatures can actually deplete and make your batteries drain or discharge very quickly but not the cold temperature all right so when they tell you do not put your battery on a concrete floor or on a ceramic tiles you know that's not true right <laughs> all right thank me later another very big misconception or what i always term a myth is the fact that people feel it's only when the sun is shining that your solar panel generates energy from the sun all right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's very understandable, isn't it? I mean, the sun is the source of the solar energy. So when there's no sun, it's very natural for anyone to assume that the energy is not coming in through the solar panel down to your system. All right. So for instance, in the afternoon, once they see that the sun rises and the sun goes down, they feel that there is no solar energy being generated at that particular time. But for the fact that you don't see the sun or feel the sun does not necessarily mean that the sun is not shining. The sun is present. All right. But it's just that you can feel it or see it. <laughs> but don't worry the solar panel and the charge controller is sensing the sun at that particular time so these are two major components in your solar system that has been charged to bring in energy beyond what you see all right so the charge controller the mppt is constantly tracking the solar energy far away and of course your solar panel is always feeling of uh, the solar energy so it doesn't really matter if you see it or you don't see it there's always sun present during the day 
So when you go to your solar charge controller in the morning around 7 o'clock, you already see that the sun and the solar energy is already beginning to come right into your solar system even without you feeling or seeing the sun. All right, so there's always sun presence uh, during the day. So the only time the sun completely goes is when it's extremely cloudy or when it is evening time, 6.30, 7 o'clock, that's when the sun completely goes, all right? So there's always sun. So don't always feel that if there is no sunshine present, that there is no solar energy. That is a misconception. You can call it a myth. <laughs> So another misconception I hear all the time is the fact that solar energy installation is not sufficient to handle all your energy needs like, you know, power up all those inductive appliances like pumping machine, like microwaving, cooking in your gas cooker, washing machine, all of those things that really requires huge energy for you to power them up. That solar energy is pretty much limited to your lighting points, your TV and your fans that's not true my friend all right solar energy can handle almost pretty much everything that your on grid or what we've come to know as nepa in nigeria does so anything you're going to use your nepa to do or your on grid to do you can also use uh, your solar energy to do it all you need to do is to increase the capacity that you have it all starts from the capacity of 0 0.5 kva to 1 kva 2 kva 5 kva 50 kva 100 kva and so on so it all depends on what you can afford or how much you can raise the capacity but it pretty much can do everything that your on grid can do and even more all right so when you hear that uh your solar energy installation is just limited to your lighting points your tv and your fans that it can handle all the other heavy and inductive appliances that's not true now you know Another misconception is the fact that people, uh, most especially here in Nigeria, that's what I hear all the time, that the lifespan of a deep cycle battery does not go beyond three years. <laughs> that I can authoritatively tell you that it's a myth and it's a misconception. The reason why your average battery lasts for three years are two reasons. Number one, maybe you would have bought a substandard battery. Number two, your installation is wrong. So if your installation is wrong and the things that are supposed to be done are not done on a regular, your batteries will not last for more than three years. So it's becoming like it's a norm that after three years you have to change your batteries because you're doing the wrong thing. All right, so it's a myth and it's a misconception because batteries last as much as 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years. So if you do the right thing in terms of uh, ensuring that the right things are done in your configurations, in your setup, in how much you care for the batteries and all of that. So it's a lot more deeper. So it's a misconception in itself. It's a myth when they tell you that your batteries can only last for three years. People believe that hotter the sun or when the sun is extremely high, the temperature is really hot, that your solar panel generates more energy. All right. So when they see a lot of sunshine and it's when you get out into the sun and it's really very hot, like you feel like running back into the house, that that is really the type of sunshine that gets you really, really big volumes of energy that comes through your solar panels and down to your solar system. But that's really not true. All right. Um, when the sun is extremely very hot the solar panel loses a lot of energy through heat so most of the energy that it would have converted down to your solar system to be able to power up your needs are lost through a lot of heat uh, while the conversion is going on so when your solar panels are all heated up and most especially your polycrystalline solar panels are really culprits be culprits for this because when it gets heated up you have a lot of heat being dissipated and you lose a lot of energy so people who live in cold climates actually have the very best of sun all right because situations where like if you're in the tropic and it rains and after raining and the sun shines through the weather is cool and there's this quality of that sun that when it hits your solar panel it generates a huge volume of energy it just climbs up it just keeps going up in kilowatts so it's a myth that extremely very hot sun generates more energy for you on your solar panels all right it is a cooler temperature and mild sun that gives you very huge volumes of energy through your solar panels Another myth and misconception is that people feel that the only place you can install 
a solar panel is on the roof so that in itself in a way disenfranchises people like tenants who are living in people's houses because they don't have access to the roof or the landlord says absolutely no you can't put your solar panel on my roof they are stranded in that regard so they can have a solar panel but it's not only on the roof that you can install your solar panel all right so you have bifacial solar panels that you can hang by the wall side with a wall bracket all right so it's a myth and it's a misconception when you hear that the only place you can put your solar panel is on the roof that's not true all right so the next myth and misconception is the fact that people feel that um the voltage that comes out of the battery that installations that you have at home can actually shock and kill you that's the battery terminals or the exposed wires when you touch the batteries the shock or the electric shock that comes from that's the current or the voltage that comes out of it can actually shock and kill you all right so that in itself is subject to argument all right and why i say that is because the average installation in most homes are usually 48 volts all right that's not enough to kill anybody the current or the voltage that comes out of those batteries are not enough if it's a 48 volt system all right so it's pretty much it's going to give you like a little bit of a tingle of a shock but it's not going to kill you but the ones that are very dangerous that are mostly installed in factories or industries that are used to uh, operate very heavy inductive appliances or machines are very high voltage inverters those ones can kill you because the voltage is very high the voltage the voltage goes to as much as 380 uh, 400 volts and all of that so those are the ones that can kill you but in most homes you don't have those high voltage inverters present at home people feel that you can combine batteries sometimes when you're using a different battery when you're using a battery and you want to upgrade and you want to add more batteries all right and you go and get an entirely different brand of battery and you add to the old one that you have so you're using a brand a which is pretty old and you want to upgrade and you want to add battery b to it and people feel like you can combine any battery it doesn't really matter as long as it's battery all right you can combine them that is a myth that's a misconception that should never happen you don't combine batteries it's not advisable to combine batteries okay the reason is that batteries have different chemical compositions all right so the time is going to take this battery to charge is going to be more or less than the other battery you're trying to add the both of them together all right so uh you're not meant to mix batteries and besides we have different types of batteries we have lithium batteries we have agm batteries we have a gel batteries you can mix any of these batteries and even if both batteries were tubular batteries you can mix them if they are not the same brand and if they are not the same age you can mix the old one and the new one you can only mix the same type of brand and the same age of battery if they are all brand new batteries you mix them if they are pretty much old batteries you mix them but you do not mix different brands of battery it's a myth and that should never happen another myth and misconception is that your batteries can explode no that's not true <laughs> now the function of the charge controller is to regulate the energy that comes from your solar panels so that it doesn't overcharge or damage your batteries that's the function it's never going to allow enough energy to go to the point of charging the battery and the battery goes poof that's not going to happen all right so when somebody tells you that oh you shouldn't install your solar that the batteries might explode and endanger people in the house that's not true all right because uh there's regulations to these things your inverter is never going to overcharge your batteries uh your solar charge controller is never going to overcharge your batteries all right <laughs> so that in itself is a myth is a misconception all right because your batteries are not going to explode people also have this myth and misconception that a solar panel cannot be moved once it is installed so they always ask you that question that i know that the moment the solar panels are installed in the roof you can no longer move them that is a myth and that's a misconception you can move your solar panels for as long as you want all right the glass is built with very thick tempered glass you can move the glass around anytime so if you're moving from this house to a new house please feel free to move your solar panels because you can actually move them uh, from one location to the other detach them from the roof like i said earlier uh, it's mounted on 
a solar panel rack so all you need to do is to unscrew the bolts and you move the solar panel to your new location so never leave your solar panels in your old house because there's nothing wrong with it you can move it and take it to the new house so when you hear that you can't move your solar panel from your old house to a new house please i need you not to believe this all right because it's a myth and it's a misconception all right so that's really really very important we'll appreciate if you take your time and subscribe and also click on the bell icon so that we can notify you when we have fresh and brand new videos all right everybody that's all we have time for today thank you very much my name is still ikena from smiling sun everything solar installation everything inverter installation everything going green see you in the next one